Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. Hey guys, this video is so back in with another card fight Vanguard deck profile. So if you guys enjoy, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate to the Patreon. And let's get one started. Today we have Royal Paladin, Jewel Knights. So, Jewel Knights is interesting. I want to let it be clear. I don't know how my upload schedule is going to go for this. I know Jewel Knights is probably going to go up on Thursday, but I'm not so sure. And I don't know when the fight is going to happen with them. But for the first, but I want to let it be clear. The fight that I had with Jewel Knights on camera was the first fight I had with Jewel Knights. I want to let that be, or not first fight in general with Jewel Knights, but like first night, first fight with the new Jewel Knight cards. And Jewel Knights still work out pretty well. It's just that that one fight was kind of in favor of the other deck on accident. So let's go ahead and discuss Jewel Knights and we'll talk about why they're really good. First up, we have our starter in Glime. 6k base, 10k shield, 10 grade 0 boost, auto and upon, draw a card, then if your opponent's Vanguard to grade 1 grader, you, you get a quick shield ticket. So you draw, if you went second, most likely, you get a quick shield out of it, which is just a 5k shield that you normally use for discard fodder. All around standard starter, nothing too special about it. I really wish there was a Jewel Knight starter so I could make that the starter, but there isn't, but it's still pretty good though. Next up, our trigger lineup. We run 4 draw PG and flash shield salt. 5k base, grade 0, boost, 0 shield, draw trigger, you continue to summon, you have 4 summons in your deck, and auto guard circle when place this card card from your hand, one of you is, cannot be hit to the battle. Okay, I could see a lot of people arguing that you might want to run 12 crits in uh, Jewel Knights. I could definitely see it. Jewel Knights with 12 crits? Your opponent would hate you, and would probably think that you're an asshole, but... <laughs> I prefer the draw PG over a crit channel. It's and the reason for this is because like with all the testing I did, I seem to come into the problem with where for some reason when I'm on Salome, I mean Salome, I Salome, I said it right the first time. I seem to not have enough draw knights half the time, or like almost barely have enough draw knights to be able to use her skill and able to get her restand. So I like to have the draw triggers just so I can fill up my hand with draw knights to call for later. Cause what I've noticed with this deck, or at least my play style with this deck, is I play stupidly aggressive and my draw knights, despite the fact all of them being at four, all choose to stay in deck except for like a select four without throughout the entirety of the game. So the draw triggers to help force out the ones that want to stay in deck. So four copies of the draw PG. 8 crit and bringer of luck of good luck epona and flow go because you know crit pressure is a thing and four heal triggering you just so made in a lane okay i've explained why i don't like heal guards but if i need to explain it again 5k shield difference is a big thing i'm not going to go into full detail but 5k shield difference is the is part of it but then also heal guardians are greatly detrimental to my style if you want more elaboration on it just go look at any of my videos from the past two weeks and then just take a gamble on which video it might be that's a deck profile and you'll probably get my answer to it there's only like three of them including this one that probably won't have the answer so four copies of the heal trigger and then on to grade ones Two copies of Knife Exemplary Sword Lucius, who I forgot was in my deck, and now I have to ask this question, where the fuck were you when I needed you? <laughs> AK base, 10k shield, grade 1 with boost, auto rear when your grade 3 or greater vanguard is placed on van- yeah, I don't know why I was about to say on rear guard or vanguard when it specifies vanguard. Put this unit to soul, draw a card and call a card from your hand to rear. Okay, you get a soul card, you get a hand card, you can call rear guard, and if you place during the battle phase, essentially an extra attack, I don't think- Jewel Knights will ever get a card that can place during the battle phase, but I I wouldn't be surprised if they eventually did get one that could do a superior ride during battle phase, considering they can already superior call over rear guards. You know, that's what Ashley's going to do. That's what the uh, reverse Ashley's going to do if they make it. It's going to be superior ride if your Vanguard's an Ashley. Bet. I'm, will, I'm willing to bet that right now. It's going to be it. Like, lock two from our rear guards. No, ride. That's probably not going to be what it is, but it would probably be something along those lines. So... Lucius was a good card, get your soul in a deck that does a lot of soul blasting, get you a hand card and can get you a rear guard, and because you can call it to a closed rear guard circle, which is what all the uh, Jewel Knights focus on, which closed just means a unit's on it, it's really good, so two copies. Three copies of Pongo, grade one, boost, 10k shield, AK base, auto rear when placed, if you have another unit in the same calm as it, soul charge one, if the soul charge unit was a trigger, it gets plus five. So get an extra soul for free, and if that card was a trigger, the boy gets plus five, so you know, really good. The only downside is that he requires another unit to be placed in the same column, and while I have yet to misplay with that, I constantly forget it has to be in the same column, and there was one time where I technically did misplay with it, but then I realized that it wasn't, so I had to redo all that. Yeah, Pongo is really weird that it has to be in the same column, but it's still pretty good, so I give it a three copies. 
Next up, four copies of Charging Jewel Knight Morvedius, AK base, 10k shield, great on with boost, active rear guard, counter boss one, put a normal unit from your drops on the bottom of your deck. Soul charge one and one of your units with Jewel Knight in its card name, get plus five for the turn. So it can be itself, so it's 13k base, your grade threes become 18, your grade twos become 15, so that's really nice. And auto vanner rear, the standard ability for all your Jewel Knights because all of them have auto vanner rear abilities. When your other unit is placed on, on this unit circle, which means you just call over it, draw a card. So really nice, not all of them have that same ability, but all of them have the auto vanner rear when your other unit is placed on top of it, do a thing. This one is draw a card, which is really nice because that means if you ride if you ride this on van, you get a draw from starter. The next turn when you ride your grade two, you get another draw from this thing skill. So it's a really nice card, get you a free draw, get you a soul charge, only downside is that it costs kind of plus five soul charge, but also get you normal units back to deck and get you plus five. My only thing with this is specifically normal units why? I understand that Jewel Knights, the amount of stuff they send back, if it would be broken if they could just start sending back triggers like there's no tomorrow. But I swear, every time with Jewel Knights, my hand gets cluttered with fucking triggers, and I cannot send any of them back to deck, so half of my skills are unusable. More Divas, as much as I love you, please stop cursing me with triggered hands and give me actual normal units to guard with. Four of, it's still good, I just need to be able to use this ability. And then four copies of our last grade one and our main grade one, uh, Fruiting Jewel Knight Eunice. This thing looks like a fucking Aqua Force card. <laughs> D tell me I'm wrong. This looks like an Aqua Force card. Grade one boost, 10k shield, AK base, auto van, sorry, auto rear. At the end of the battle that it boosted, put a normal unit from your drop onto the bottom of your deck and soul charge one. You may return this card to hand. So, you know, send another normal unit back. Okay, once more, stop giving me triggers and I can use that ability. You get a soul charge, cool, and bounce back to hand and you have to pay no counter boss for that. We all know I love skills that don't involve paying counter boss for soul boss because I consider those free skills because you can just be more, like, I guess, free with the amount of cards in your deck that are counter boss and soul blast. And they still get their effects off, so really good in that regard. And auto van or rear, when your other unit's placed on this unit circle, as everyone else in this deck, that's what Jewel Knight does, choose one of your opponent's rear on the same column as that placed unit, AK, this unit's column, retire it, and if no units were retired, draw a card. So, either they lose a rear guard, your opponent, or you get to net a draw. Honestly, pretty good. Get you a soul charge on a boost, can also bounce stuff back to hand again, that 10k shield, can kill a rear guard, or can get net you a draw out of it. All around, Eunice is a pretty good grade one, and I do like her for that. I give her a four of. Next up, we have our grade twos. Four copies of High Dog Breeder Akane. 10k base, 5k shield, grade two with intercept, auto van or rear, when placed, counter boss one, switch effort to one, pongo, call it to rear guard, and shuffle your deck. Yeah, if you're wondering how you get this out, you just do that. If this gets in your hand, don't call it, just keep it in there as guard fodder or discard fodder. If you have an Akane, use it to get Pongo just to get a board, but Pongo, just don't call Pongo on its own, like it's useless after its place. And it continues to rear guard during the battle that, it boosted, that was boosted by a high beast, so either Flogo or Pongo, it gets plus three. So 13k, if it's boosted by Pongo, it's a 21, if Pongo got a trigger off, it's 26. And if you're boosted by Flogo, it's only gonna be 21, but that's still something, wait, no, would it? No, it wouldn't be, it'd be 18. Either way, that's still something. And Akane's decently good, you know, she can get you a Pongo and can make your board slightly quicker. So, four copies of Akane. Now on, now we have our grade two Jewel Knights, which is Explode Jewel Knight Laylee, or Lolly. Grade two, nope, I'm pretty sure I said it right the first time. Well, Laylee. Grade two, intercept, 5k show, 10k base, auto rear, when it attacks, put two normal from your drops onto the bottom of the deck. Once more, if I could please get non-triggers in drop zone, that would be appreciated. Put them into the bottom of the deck in any order, soul charge one, and this unit gets plus five for the battle. Cool, so it's a 15k swing. That's honestly really nice. Just a free 15, except, and you get a soul charge out of it for free. The only downside is, once more, stop giving me triggers in hand. I'm not even joking. It's not even just this build. It happened in my other Jewel Knight build too. For some reason, whenever I play Jewel Knights, I'm just cursed to draw triggers. The only time this, the exception to this rule is quote unquote zero, but even then, Based off of what happened in there, I say that odds are 50-50 on that one. And auto van or rear, when your other unit's placed on this unit circle, that unit gets plus 10 for the turn. So, just a force one to the unit that's placed on top of this. That's really cool, especially because Dwayne is in call during the battle phase, which means whatever gets called on top of this just gets a free force one during the battle phase. You can give this a force one, and then the unit on that circle gets two force ones, technically speaking. It, it's a whole thing. Either way, Laylee's really good. She makes whatever gets on top of her. That sounded wrong. <laughs> she makes whatever is placed nope there's no way i can make it sound right she makes 
the unit that is placed in the same circle as her stronger for free. She can also send units back for free. And Soul Charge 1, like, that's the beauty of Joinus 2, because, like, once a lot of them hit the drops, then you can start sending them back. Of course, that won't make a difference, though, if no one kills them. Thanks a lot for that one, Amon. Four copies of Laylee. And then four copies of our last grade, too, which is Dogmatized Jewel Knight Sybil. Okay, listen, guys, I, I know, I know, all y'all's pencils, they're getting really sharp right now, and Seraph Snow is about to take a lot of people to horny jail, but can we just, like... Not today. We can all avoid it. Just, you know, stop. They're, they're gonna end up getting overrun in the prison. There's a lot of prisoners in there right now. And you guys are just making it worse. So if you don't mind, can we all just put the pencils down, unsharpen them? I'm not saying you have to break them or anything, but just, you know, put them down. Maybe think of hairy balls, as I've heard. That helps with the pencil sharpening. Anyways, <laughs> grade 2, intercept 5k shield, 10k base. Auto Vayner rear, when it attacks, put a grade 2 or less from your hand to slow to draw a card. Cool. So, send literally anything that isn't a grade 3 to soul, and you get a free draw, and you're getting a soul charge out of it. If you're wondering why you're getting all these soul charges, because Ashley and the newer grade 3 soul loan both cost a high amount of, well, high quote unquote, high amount of soul blast for their abilities to go. So, that's why we have a lot of soul chargers. And out of Vanna Rear, when your other units place on top of this circle, look at the top three cards of your deck, choose up to one grade 2 or less card of Jewel its card name from among them, call it to rear, you're going to put them on the bottom of the deck in any order. Okay, the first thing I love about all Jewel Knights is that since all of them are most likely going to have that ability where auto van or rear when a unit is placed on top of it that automatically means all your jewel knights are classified as both main grade twos and great main grade ones because whenever you see them there will always be an on rat ability and so far all of them are free which is really nice but this nets you a free call of anything that isn't a grade three that's a jewel knight honestly that's pretty good and then when they start making more jewel knights it's almost just a free call of your entire deck hell like if this had beasties capabilities th this thing would like you combine this and beasties like, take the aesthetic of... Take the amount of cards Beast DD has, but then take, like, the force thing of this deck, and you shove them together, you get hell. Like, honestly, this deck is what Beast DDs could have been-ish, kind of. Not really. A little bit of mixture of both. Either way, Sybil's really good. She can get you a call, and it's really not that hard to actually hit out of the top three. Like, out of the times I've played it, only once out of like the 10 times I've used that ability has it actually failed to call a unit so that's pretty good and once more she does it for free she has no cost of soul blast or counter blast whatsoever and she can just get you a free soul by swinging into anything four of grade three time baby four copies of pure heart jewel knight ashley grade three twin drive force gift 13k base auto van or rear at the end of the battle that it attacked soul blast two search your deck for oh it's at the end of the battle it attacked i did that wrong on the timing it, it, it's fine either way search your deck for up to one grade two or less card with jewel knight its card name call it to rear guard and shuffle your deck if this unit is on van you call it two instead of one so, you know, you can, if it's on rear, you can choose to call Laylee, Sybil, you, you just can search your entire deck, except for the great threes, or if it's on van, you just call two of them, which is really nice, because you can just swing with the rear guards first, then use Ashley to place rear guards on top of them, and then get their effects off. I don't know why, I just thought something really weird, and I kind of want to say it, but I kind of don't, because I feel like if I do then I have deserved for everyone to hit the dislike button on this video, and I don't want to say it because it's kind of... There are lines I will draw when it comes to a joke, and this is the... it's Now it's past the line, more or less. Anyways, so it's really good on that regard. And auto van or rear, when your other unit is placed on this unit's circle, counter blast one, and the unit on it gets a crit for the turn. So either you place this on van, and your vanguard rides on top of this immediately, your vanguard is an extra critical, and or you just place it on rear, during and then you use this on vanguard swing and then call two and then one of them is over this and then counter boss one gets a crit so you got rear guards with criticals now either way really good if you combine with force two and you play it right you can effectively just like damage starve your opponent or push them to four damage and make it they so they have to guard every attack and as long as they didn't pull trigger it's gonna be really hard for them so all around ashley's pretty good and i give her a four for that because she can work on both van and rear and her abilities are really good and finally, we have Leading Jewel Knight Salome. Grade 3, Twin Drive Force, Gift 30k base. Also, if you couldn't tell, Salome and Ashley's are the only ones that have on-ride skills that are like on road upon skills that actually cost something. So Salome skill, auto, van, once per turn, at the end of the battle that attacked anything, by the way. Counter boss one, choose any number of cards with Jewel Knight and their card names from your hand. Call them to rear guard circles with units on top of them. And then if you call three or more cards and your opponent's vanguards are grade three or greater, 
Soul Blast 4, which this deck, every grade 2 and lower, has a Soul Charge ability, by the way. Stand in this unit. Okay, so first off, you yeah, you have to have an excess amount of Jewel Knights in hand to pull this off, but as long as you have units on circles and Jewel Knights in hand, you can just replace them. Like, say, for example, your rear guard was one Sybil, one Laylee in the front row, one Mortis in the back row, and then one Eunice, and say, for example, you had an, you said had an Ashley... A, actually, no, sorry, replace the Sybil with an, no, not the Sybil, replace, yeah, replace the Sybil with the Ashley, and then what you do is just swing with Solom, at the end of her battle, use her skill, call over the Ashley with Sybil, call over the Laylee with, I don't know, maybe another Laylee, and then r r just, like, swap these two around, okay, so the unit on this one got to draw a card, this one is allowing you to murder a rear guard and or get another draw, whoever was called on top of Laylee gets plus 10, and whoever was called on top of Ashley gets an extra crit, cool. So, multi tax our thing. Easily, this deck, on regardless of what turn your opponent is on, or like regardless of your opponent's grade, regardless of what Vanguard you're on, you can hit five attacks really easily on first grade three turn, which is really nice for either the cost of a counter blast or the cost of two soul blasts. But then, if you are on Salome in there at grade three, soul blast four, stand it, screw it. That's why this is a once per turn, because. Normally, I would advocate for, like, I advocated for the other ones where I said, like, half the ability could be once per turn and the other one can't. Yeah, no, this is one that needs to be half, no, this is one that needs to be full once per turn, because if it's not, unless they pull triggers, Jewel Knights will wreck their asses with multi-attack. And auto van or rear, when your other unit is placed on this unit circle, counter boss one in that unit gets plus 10k to drive for the turn. So, break ride, basically. I don't remember what the old Salome's break right skill used to be. No, Astro was the one with the break right skill. But, like, Salome, you know, you either ride Salome on top of Salome, and then Salome becomes a 23k triple drive beat stick, or you ride Ashley on top of Salome, and it becomes a 23 triple drive beat stick, and then we assumably have reverse Salome, I mean reverse Ashley, which we all know is going to superior ride on top of Ashley via locking of a front row rear guard circle. Boom, proceed to give Ashley an extra critical from being rolled upon. I bet right now, I'm betting it right now, that that's its skill. It's going to be at the end of the battle, Ashley attack the vanguard, lock a rear guard in the front row and then lock a rear guard in the back row specifically going to mention those two and then it's going to superior ride on top of ashley i bet right now i know it's going to happen bushy better make it happen so yeah that's what salem does and she's pretty good she gets you extra drives she gives you extra power and she can literally get you a board restand so yeah all while the opponent just has to be at grade three so cool four copies Gift-wise, we're on five force ones, five force twos, because if your opponent makes it passes, either you're doing something wrong or your opponent's really good at stalling. Force one and force two, they both go on vanguard or rearguard circles. They can both be placed on the same circle multiple times, but there's a difference between them, as force one can be stacked if it's on the same circle, and the unit on that circle gets plus 10 during your turn. So if there's one on a circle, it gets plus 10. If there's three, plus 30. If there's five, plus 50, etc. Uh, for force two the original critical of the unit there becomes two it's not that it's the original it's not the original critical is plus one because if it was i mean even with that wording it would still be the same thing but it wouldn't be like if you put two of them on a circle the unit's critical wouldn't become three it would only stay two because as the original critical becomes two so and when it comes down to which gift you want to pick for it i can see arguments for both me personally i prefer force two just because like Ashley can make everyone get an extra critical and the literally the only two that sorry the only three that use counter blast are these two followed by um Mordvis because let's be fair I like never call Kane she never shows up when I need her to and I typically use her as PG fodder so I typically like to use force two just so I can have like a full front row of extra criticals put them to high damage early and then with all the extra five because literally it's really easy just to hit five attacks in a turn with this deck you have the five attacks and all of them have like or at least three of them have extra crits on them and you want to be able to like push for game with that but if you really want to go force one just to like add power because that's like the downside to the deck where only Laylee can add power i can definitely see why especially because the deck can get five attacks really easily so there is technically no reason to run force two i can see arguments for both that definitely belongs to your play style i would honestly go flippy floppy with it but i choose just to use force two more just because i like the idea of force two more but that doesn't mean force two is the best and then we have our quick shield, which is when one of you attacks plus 5k for the battle. Standard 5k shield, nothing special about it. Unfortunately, in this deck, minus the PG, we have no actual discard fodder. So, quite literally, unless you want to shove it to soul via um, Sybil's effect over here, it's just a 5k shield. The One of the rare occasions where it actually is a 5k shield. And that's pretty much it for the deck. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, all around, this deck is really fun. You get, you're always guaranteed 5 attacks. 
and you are can hit numbers, hit extra crits, and just make your opponent's life a living hell while they're playing against just waifu with armor. <laughs> That's what this is. This is waifus when waifus get pissed off. This is Vanguard's version of um, the Amazonas from... No, yeah, no, this is just Vanguard's version of Amazons. Of Amazonas. Yep, I, I'm not even going to debate about that statement. It's true and we know it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, go to the Patreon, join Discord, follow the Twitch, and I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to stand up your Vanguards. <laughs>